Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mahdi Tijani back with you, aka the Red Mahdi, aka the Masculine Reviver. Reviver. And today, we're going to go over another Jordan Peterson video. Um, I have seen this video before, but I don't remember its details, so my reaction will be authentic to it. And it's discussing the qualms a woman has. You know what? I'm not going to spoil it for you. Let's just get straight into the video. They have difficulty with women who are completely out of control. But we women should, we have should difficulty. control women. Well, other women themselves, men, society, just like everyone is controlled. I mean, oh, you're controlled. God damn! God damn! Don't say you are in control, Neil. Don't say that, Jordan. Loud. That's, that's my attempt at Texas accent. I know, that's terrible. By society, I'm controlled by society, and thank God for that. I mean, it's part of funny. I mean, you, you described yourself as a liberal, and I think a liberal doesn't think that a society controls. I want you to pay attention to her body language, man. Whew. Apparently, over 60% of all language is communicated through the body, not through words. Notice how uncomfortable she was at this word control. Moving and twitching and like moving like, like a beast is trying to emerge from her. But I want you to ask yourself a question because I get thrown this at me a lot as well. Oh, you're a controlling husband. Oh, you just want control over your, over your wife. Yes, absolutely. I want control over my wife. No doubt about it. If control is a bad thing, then it necessitates by logic that out of control is a good thing. Think about it. Control is fundamentally important, crucial. It is not a bad thing. Because if it was bad, out of control, an out of control woman, an out of control life, an out of control job would be the goal to aspire to. No, control is the aim. And I'll give you a quote from Robert, one of Robert Greene's books, The Laws of Human Nature. And he says, to the effect of, a man's self-esteem is intimately tied to his sense of power, control, and respect for his opinions. Yes, we want control. Well, let's say regulates. I'm a psychologist as well. But I mean, what is an out-of-control from... woman? What is this creature? How do we know when we met one? Ya bint ammi, habibti, it's you. <laughs> well, I'm sure that you've met women in your life that, that, that acted towards you in a bullying and detestable manner. It's very difficult for women to cope with that because they don't have any real recourse. And female bullying can be unbelievably vicious. And usually it takes the place of, takes the shape of reputation destruction, innuendo and gossip. It's well documented. It's very o difficult to women. defend. But, no, women. men do it too, but men, no. Oh, but sorry, patterns, disproportionately women. In any of you or not? Sorry. Yes, when yes, disproportionately women. That's what the data indicate. I mean, if but men where are. Where is the if, data on innuendo and if, gossip? Well, it's among antisocial behavior among adolescents. It's a well documented field. So, because people. What I love about JP is that he says the things that us men know, but he's got the stats to back it. Like, we know this as men that women tend to uh, passive, are passively aggressive, that they will aggress others with their innuendo, insults, stuff with their tongues. They whip, whip men and women alike with their tongues. But JP is always, he's always ready with the stats and facts. So salute to JP. Yeah, aggressive and antisocial behavior in women and in men. And in women, it tends to take the expression of innuendo, gossip and reputation destruction. And in men, it take, tends to take the form of outright physical aggression. There's a whole literature on that. It's, it's not a surprise to anyone. This has been known for, for, for 30 years. I mean, oh way... man, she is so uncomfortable right now. The body language is so telling. Just go back 10 seconds. Just, just look at her, the pit pursing of the lips. The... She's trying to keep a smile on her face, but her lips are pursed at the same time. And she keeps breaking eye contact with him because it's most uncomfortable. Fascinating. I think the social... idea of the female gossip probably predates 30 well, years. Well, it does. But it does. By a long time, but that doesn't, it, it no, doesn't but, make it gospel. But really, people does have, it? No, it doesn't. But people have looked at how women express. Look, women have to express aggression somehow, unless you're willing to say that they're not aggressive. They tend not to do it physically, not to the degree men do, so they use other channels. And what other channels are there other than physical aggression if you're going to be aggressive? Well, you go after people verbally, you go after them with innuendo and gossip and reputation destruction. And that's how it that's how it works. And just to be clear, that you think that's predominantly a female modus operandi. It isn't that I think that. 
Well, I'm it's that the you. clinical literature indicates that. <laughs> it isn't that I think it. Well, I'm not interviewing the clinical literature. I'm interviewing you. What do you well, think? Well, I'm a... Wow. Wow. SubhanAllah. Wow. You see, what she wants to do is, is she wants to do the very thing that he is describing is somehow denigrate his reputation. I don't want what the clinical literature says. I want to know what Jordan Peterson says so that I can misquote you and then attack your reputation afterwards. And JP is standing his ground and saying, no, I'm just the messenger. I'm passing on the message. Don't shoot the messenger. She is doing the very thing that he is talking about. And I think one of the comments says that on this video as well. I'll post the original video link. That her, her lack of awareness of doing the very thing that he's describing. Fascinating. Just in a scientist. And I, tend to, and I tend to base my opinions on what I've read in the broad, relevant clinical literature. I'm not making this stuff up. I studied antisocial behavior for like 15 years. I'm actually quite an expert on it. Women manifest aggression towards themselves and to others, but they don't use lethal force. They don't use physical force the same way men do. So they have to do it some other way. Why do well, they have the other to ways? do something some other way? That, you're like, because you can people take are your aggressive. War against, you know, so you're basically a Hobbesian. Like, uh, no, war of all against half, all. Half and half. Half Hobbes, half Rousseau. That's why I'm not an ideologue. Because I don't think that people are good or evil. I think they're both. I don't think that culture is security or tyranny. I think it's both. And I don't think that nature is benevolence or catastrophe. I think it's both. And that's why I'm not an ideologue. I, I need you to cite rule now because I've got 28 bits of paper here, but I'm just going to carry on in the meantime because we need... So fascinating. You know, once you have cornered an individual with your argument and they see no way out, they have one of two options. That's more. They've got one of two options. Either they agree with you and humbly accept that perhaps they were wrong, or they simply pretend to not acknowledge your argument, period. Or they can continue to argue, but at this point it's quite clear she has no leg to stand on. But what's very interesting is that instead of recognising his point and accepting perhaps there may be some truth in it, humble herself a little bit. No, instead, she'd prefer to simply purse her lips and find the next question. Move on to the next topic. If you've watched the interview with Kathy Newman, Jordan Peterson and Kathy Newman, it's got over 30 million views on Channel 4's uh, YouTube channel. She does the exact same thing. I, called, I call it garden fence hopping. Hopping from argument to argument to argument. I've even had this experience with my wives. I'm not even going to cap. And I have to stop them in their tracks when it happens. I said it to them. Whenever I've had a disagreement with one of my wives, I've been like, hey, 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 don't garden hop. Acknowledge my point. Because you're not, you not answering indicates to me that you, you can tell that my point is correct and it stands its ground. And generally speaking, there is no, not much point in arguing with a woman, particularly in an intimate setting. Because once her emotions take over, a reason goes out of the window, generally speaking. But you can see it here and you can see it in the interview with Kathy Newman, uh, the Channel 4 interview. Garden hopping. Just trying to find something, something that, that, that she can latch on to, to say, ha, I got you. As opposed to humbly acknowledging the fact as it is getting towards the end and nicely warmed up. Uh, you rightly picked up on the disruptive effect of, of social media, but also the technological shifts in, in media and mass media uh, consumption. Uh, my argument was that this might be, you know, leading to a polarisation of people like you who are immensely successful within this milieu, also driving your book sales. You know, you just, uh, just I think, just uh, as I'm talking to you, hit the, the top of the Amazon list here. In the I want you to pace this panel up. All right. We're going to break this down now. I've just finished reading uh, Robert Greene's book, Laws of Human Nature. Absolute epic. I have to tell you, I was genuinely sad to come to the end of that book. You know when you've, re you've read such a good book and you feel so sad when you come to the end of it, like, man, I wish this wouldn't end. That's one of those books. Get that book, Robert Greene, Laws of Human Nature. She's done something here which is often an indication of envy, but in this circumstance, I don't think she's doing it out of envy. I think she's doing it to try and, once again, denigrate his reputation or denigrate his views. Take away weight from his views. And what she said here was, she pointed to something. She said, oh, and your book sales, they're doing very well, aren't they? That's not a compliment. Don't get it twisted. What she's trying to insinuate is, you are sitting here preaching these opinions because it's profitable for you to do so. That's the insinuation that 
You, Mr. Peterson, you're not sincere. You've had very profitable book sales. You're at the top of the Amazon booksellers list right now. That must be why you're saying what you're saying, because what you're saying is profitable at this moment in time. I don't know how to come to 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 logically defeat your argument. I don't have a comeback for you. But you know what? I do know you're selling a lot of books. So let me latch on to that, because if I can even give a hint to the audience that you're sitting here saying what you're saying because it's adding to your bank balance then I can place a seed of doubt into the mind of the audience, even if I haven't actually logically given a counter, a counter argument, a logical counter argument. This is one of the traits of envy, but in this instance here, I don't think she's doing it out of envy. She is doing it to denigrate his argument one way or another. UK. Uh but there is that, you know, that point that you become part of the problem that you've put your finger on yourself. You want people to get along together. You want men and women to sort of trade off. We don't agree entirely where these trade offs are, but, you know, mm -hmm. we, we were here and arguing about it. And yet at the same time, you succeed most when you say something very provocative that goes viral. Boom. What did I tell you? Well, I didn't even remember this part of the interview. I did not know she was going to say that. You succeed most when you say something provocative. You, Mr. Jordan Peterson, are sitting here spouting what you're spouting, saying what you're saying, because it benefits your bank balance. I don't know how to disagree with you. I have no logical counter argument, but I do know you're getting rich from it. So you know what? That's what I'm going to latch on to. And that's exactly what I said. Exactly what I said. She wants to tear apart his argument based upon the success he's having with his bank balance, with his book selling. When the truth is, when you become successful at something, it naturally reflects in your bank balance. Exactly what I just said. You think you're sort of trapped, no, I trapped in a paradox? No, I don't think that's when I succeed most. So, for example, one of the, one of the incidents that propelled me to, to, to su success, let's say, in terms of, of public recognition in the UK was my interview with Kathy Newman. Mm. And the reason that that propelled me to success wasn't because I said something provocative, but because I refused under substantial duress to say anything provocative. Mm -hmm. And so the part of the reason that I've become popular to the degree that I have been is that I'm actually very good at keeping my temper under situations that would, would, would not, under situations where there's substantial reason not to, let's say. And that's one thing that I completely have to agree, agree, agree with Jordan Peterson that I was going to actually say it myself. But a point to note is Jordan Peterson's reaction to these petty little jibes. She's jibing at him and she's a mature woman. She must be well into her 60s. And these are the tactics of petulant teenagers. There's no other way to put it. I don't know how to disagree with you. I don't like what you're saying. So I'm going to throw a jibe out there and see if you bite. She knows that she's clutching at straws at this point. She knows that she is, but she doesn't want to accept it. So she throws out the bait to irritate him. You're getting rich from this. And props to Jordan Peterson, zero reaction. Cold as ice. And let that be a lesson to you who's watching right now. It's in one of the laws of power, by the way. Always maintain your frame. Never allow the opponent to force your hand into a reaction. The moment you do that, you're on the back foot. And I'm telling you as someone from experience, this is especially difficult for me. I'm Algerian. We are naturally more emotional. This is more difficult for me to implement, but it is a, it is a superpower. If you can successfully implement this by not taking the bait when someone puts it out there for you to latch onto, you will frustrate and infuriate. Frustrate and infuriate. So on that note, if you like this video, please hit the like, hit the subscribe. Join my men's community on Patreon. I'm going to put the link below. We've got a Blood Brothers Zoom call tomorrow. Well, it depends when you watch this video, I guess. But anyway, we have a, a monthly Zoom call as well as private content that gets put up on there. Follow me on Instagram at the Red Matthew. I'll put all of my links, links in the description box. Let me know what you thought. Share this with a brother. We need to educate ourselves on how to respond to these narratives. Zakam al khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.